Hi, I'm Jonathan Portillo, and today we'll be talking about the valence bond theory of sulfur hexiodide. Um, I will be talking about the Lewis dot structure, Vesper, box diagram, and contour diagram for this molecule. I will first be discussing the Lewis dot structure, which will help us determine uh, the Vesper for this molecule. So for the Lewis dot structure, we're going to determine have to determine the total amount of um, valence electrons within the molecule and this will help us uh, draw the structure. We can see that sulfur has six valence electrons and iodide has seven valence electrons. But with iodide we also notice that there are six within this molecule. So what we have to do is multiply the number of valence electrons which is seven with the number of iodide atoms which is six. And when we do that, we get a total of 42. So now to find the total amount of valence electrons within this molecule, uh, we add together the 6 electrons from sulfur and the 42 electrons from iodide. When we add those two together, we get a total of 48 valence electrons for this molecule. So now, um, we're drawing the Lewis dot structure. We're going to have to put sulfur in the middle and all six iodides surrounding it. Uh, we notice that there are um, no lone pairs. No lone pairs. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but if we do remember, um, sulfur is able to have six bonds surrounding it. And that is because uh, sulfur has a d orbital available to it and does not follow the octet rule. Okay, so now that we have the Lewis dot structure um, drawn, we can now determine the electron geometry. Um, and when we determine the electron geometry, this will in turn help us um, determine the molecular geometry and also the Vesper for this molecule. So looking at the structure, um, we see no lone pairs, as we've stated, uh, but we do see the six iodides surrounding the sulfur. The role of these uh, six iodide will represent the six electron clouds, and with those um, electron clouds, we can then determine the electron geometry. And the electron geometry would be octahedral, and we know with um, octahedral, all angles are 90 degrees. Um, so here we'll be talking about the Vesper. So now that we have determined the electron geometry, we can now determine the molecular geometry and draw the Vesper. So as we were talking, talking uh, from before, from the last slide, we determined that the electron geometry was octahedral. Um, so we can now determine what the molecular geometry would be. We know that there is no lone pairs, as we've said before. And what would change the molecular geometry would be if a lone pair was present. In this case, so since there is um, no lone pairs, the molecular geometry stays the same as uh, octahedral. So starting off, um, drawing the Vesper for an octahedral, uh, we, get, we begin by drawing the square. And this square will represent our plane, but also keeping in mind that um, we want this to be a 3D structure. So we have to draw the two lines at the top and the bottom. These. Um, these will be the iodides at the top and bottom of the Vesper. And then we're going to have to draw the two solid line triangles, these right here. And these will represent the iodides that are protruding towards the front of the Vesper. Next, we have to draw the dashed line triangles we see here. And these are going to represent the iodides protruding towards the back of the Vesper. And as we know, for this, um, since the electron geometry is octahedral, and so is the molecular, 
a angle or 90 degrees. So on this slide, I have put some uh, three D models of different views. So on this left side, I have the electronic version of the three D model, and on this right side, I have the three D model made from a model kit. So as we look on the left side, uh, the top one, uh, this is a side view of the molecule, and for this bottom one, this is uh, an aerial view. So we can begin by go ahead and labeling. Uh, we have our sulfur and our six iodides. And I'll go ahead and do the same for the bottom one. So as we look at the top to left one here, um, we can see that the 90 degree angles that I mentioned before are there. Now I'll go ahead and draw those. And we can pretty much see that these angles do make a perfect 90 degrees. And they pretty much can be found throughout the whole model. And when we look at this bottom left one here, um, if you remember, I did draw the square um, that represented a plane from the Vesper model, and I'm going to go ahead and draw that again. So this square represents um, our plane, and we can also see that um, there are 90 degree angles, which tells us that all angles are 90 degrees. So I'll go ahead and draw those. And these angles are 90 degrees. So in turn, this tells us that uh, angles are 90 degrees. When we look at this right side here, this bottom right, um, it is the same thing as this bottom left, just um, a model kit. And for this top right one here, um, it is like this one. So I'll go ahead and draw, um, go ahead and label the iodides and sulfur. So now, um, now that we've labeled those, uh, I'll go ahead and draw um, the solid line triangles as we did in the Vesper one, um, which would be pointing towards the sulfur, which does represent uh, the iodides protruding towards the front. And now we can draw the dash triangles, which um, would point away from the sulfur which represent the iodides um, protruding towards the back. And lastly, we can um, draw the iodides that would represent, um, that would be at the top and the bottom of the molecule. Okay. So since we do not have any lone pairs, we do not, um, in this case, we do not have to worry about our um, lone pair uh, to lone pair repulsion. Uh, we also don't need to worry about our lone pair to bonding pair repulsion. And also, we really don't need to worry about our bonding pair to um, bonding pair repulsion because it's pretty much almost um, negligible in this case.
So then, um, since we do not have any loan pairs, uh, we are going to, you know, as we said before, uh, have all angles in 90 degrees. And what this would uh, give us, as we said before as well, um, our electron geometry would be octahedral and our molecular geometry um, would be the same octahedral. Next, I'll be talking about the box diagram. So for the box diagram for sulfur hex iodide, something that Vesper doesn't really explain is how the iodides fit in with the sulfur. So as we look on uh, the left side here, uh, what this represents would be the ground state for sulfur. Uh, we can see that 3s, 3p, and 3d are only being shown um, because 1s, 2s, and 2p orbitals uh, really take up space and we're primarily focusing on uh, 3s, 3p, and 3d orbitals. So when we look at the ground state, uh, we see that there's two spots available for the 6 iodide right here. And because we only have two spots, this means that we can only have uh, two of the iodides with sulfur. So what we need to do is take uh, two electrons, and those two electrons would be these two. One, two, and promote them to the d orbital. And since energy was added to promote those to the d orbital, um, those two electrons, now that leaves us with six spots open, um, which would be these here, circled in red. Therefore, this would also um, this also gives us the excited state of sulfur, which is represented by the star here. So now we can take those six spots and hybridize those, which would give us uh, the sp3 d2 orbital. And in this orbital, um, because we have the 3s, um, all the 3p, and two of the 3d being utilized in the hybridization, um, we can have those six spots open and uh, here we would have the six iodides that we see. So when we look at the periodic table, uh, iodide is in the 5p orbital with one electron that is unpaired from each of the six iodides. And that one electron will fill up uh, those six spots. So here I could go ahead and draw it. And since that one electron um, did fill up those six spots, uh, this can also be represented uh, by the picture below. Uh, so I'll be talking about the contour diagram for this uh, for this one. Um, first, uh, what I did was I did draw the square as we did for the Vesper. This represents our plane of the molecule. And these lines intersecting um, kind of sets out a map of um, guidance to where everything should be. So here's uh, sulfur shown in the middle. And with all the iodides um, surrounding the sulfur. These circles here closest to the center, uh, these are representing the sulfur atom here, here, and here. And sulfur is smaller than iodide, so sulfur is shown here as smaller than uh, iodide, as we can see. If you notice the dots um, here, 
these uh, dots represent the electrons that are being shared between uh, sulfur and iodide. And the iodide are the large uh, affinity symbols that you see here. Now with these uh, circles representing sulfur here, 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 and here, uh, each one would be an sp3 d2. And with the iodides, we have um, our 5p. So since we remember, um, there are no double bonds. All the bonds are sigma bonds. And with the no lone pairs that we have, all of these bondings are um, bonded pairs. And with all angles being 90 degrees. Um, and these are just uh, two more 3D models. So this bottom right here is showing the contour diagram of the atomic orbitals. And this top one here is also a 3D model. And this one's showing the atomic orbitals, but with also the overlap of the sulfur and iodide. And this would be also showing the sharing of electrons. So, in the end, the um, electron geometry uh, for this one would be octahedral, as well as for the molecular geometry. And what this would give us is that all 